In this video today, we are going to talk about S-bar. What is S-bar? This is a technique that provides a framework or template for communicating information between healthcare team members. What is the advantage of using this? The advantage of using this is that this is a standard and acceptable method to promote patient safety. This technique has been used and is approved to have a positive effect on communication. It allows a reduction of adverse events and promotes patient safety. What do the alphabets in S bar stand for? S bar is an acronym and each alphabet stands for a piece of information. S stands for situation, B for background, A for assessment and R for recommendation. Let us talk a little bit about them in detail. When a doctor is describing the situation of a patient, they are describing how the patient is at that particular point in time. This includes information about the patient's history, examination and any lab investigations that may be present. During this stage, the goal is to inform about what is happening with the patient. When we talk about background, we are providing the context of the patient's reality and expectations. This information is relevant, but may not be present in the history. For example, the patient is not affording or the family is very violent and aggressive or the patient has expressed a special wish that not, should not be discussed with family members that her, fam her pregnancy was conceived through IVF. Moving on to assessment, the doctor communicating the information should inform the provisional diagnosis or assessment which includes the information about the patient's background. And the doctor should also inform what recommendation she is making according to the practice. Now, if in your institution you are going to use this method, then you must be very confident and precise about how you would like to manage your patient. Remember, for a very sick patient in ICU, your recommendations will include giving initial resuscitation measures and getting input and action from different disciplines. In such cases, an explicit statement should be made as to what is required, its urgency and action required. Who should be using S-Bar? All professionals in the hospital will use S-Bar and these professionals or doctors or nurses will include the team of doctors who are handing over for the on-call duty or it may be a referral to other departments such as consultation to a physician from other departments or it may even be doctors communicating with nurses or vice versa. Let us move on to case number one and follow an example of using S bar on a patient who is admitted to the ward. The problem is that Samina is a 24 year old married lady who is admitted to the ward. This is her first pregnancy and she is booked at your hospital. She is currently 13 weeks pregnant and has had irregular vaginal spotting. So far, ultrasound shows the heartbeat is present at the time of admission. However, now the situation has changed. The nurse calls you and tells you the patient has abdominal pain and has increased bright red blood discharge per vagina. 
you examine the patient and her vitals are normal. The lower abdomen is mildly tender. You are unable to pick up the fetal heart on Doppler. On vaginal examination, the cervical os is closed. The patient is agitated and wants to see her husband. You must communicate information about the patient to her consultant. How will you do it following the S-bar tool? As far as the situation is concerned, you will inform the consultant that you are calling about the patient, inform the consultant about your name and designation and the name of the patient about whom you are calling. You must also inform about the diagnosis with which the patient was admitted. So the patient was admitted with threatened abortion and now she is complaining of lower abdominal pain and increased vaginal bleeding. The vitals are normal and the lower abdomen is mildly tender. The fetal hearts cannot be heard in the ward with the Doppler and the cervical os is closed on vaginal examination. The background to the patient is that she was prescribed local and oral progestogen. She has only had one dose so far after admission. Her complete antenatal investigations were done at 9 weeks of pregnancy and everything was normal and her blood group was AB negative. She is very anxious and is also in some pain. She wants to talk to her husband. In your assessment, you will inform that I have examined her and the vitals are normal. Abdominal examination reveals mild tenderness on palpation. The fetal heart could not be heard on Doppler and the vaginal examination reveals that the cervical os is closed and the uterus is 12 weeks pregnant. The patient is distressed with abdominal pain and concern due to the bleeding. My, the assessment is that the patient may be aborting now, actively. In the recommendation, you will tell your consultant that I have already informed the nurse in charge of the ward and the receptionist is contacting her husband to call him over. An intravenous line has been started with infusion of normal saline and an analgesic has been given intravenously. The patient has been kept nil by mouth and she is going to get an urgent ultrasound scan on the ward. You will then confirm with the consultant if they approve of the plan, if they want any other piece of information, if they want to add something to the plan and also when they will come and see the patient. So this is an example of communication using SBAR method with a consultant. However, whenever you inform, you must always ask the person at the other end of the phone if they want any more information or any more precise information. Moving on to case number two, this is a patient admitted to the labor room. The problem here is that a woman has come to the labor room in her first pregnancy and you are the on-call doctor. You have taken the history and performed an examination. The patient is registered as a private patient for a consultant. She conceived through intracytoplasmic sperm injection and is 24 years old. She is currently 36 weeks pregnant and complains of pain in the lower abdomen for the last 6 hours. The pain is regular and coming every 10 minutes now. She does not look distressed. On examination, her pulse is 100 per minute and regular. The blood pressure is 135 over 85 
the fetal heart is normal on the fetoscope. On vaginal examination, cervix is soft and not dilated. It is 30% effaced with no vaginal discharge. You have to communicate this information to her consultant. How will you do it according to the S-bar tool? As far as the situation is concerned, you have to inform that you are a doctor, your name, your designation and inform that you are calling from the labor room. You must call and inform that the patient has been registered under the care of the consultant whom you are calling. Inform that she is a 24 year old married lady in her first pregnancy and now 36 weeks pregnant. She has had pain in the lower abdomen for the past 6 hours. The pain is regular and coming every 10 minutes now. She does not look distressed. On examination, her pulse is 100 beats per minute and regular. The blood pressure is 135 over 85. The fetal heart is normal on the fetoscope. On vaginal examination, cervix is soft, undilated and 30% effaced with no vaginal discharge. She is accompanied by her husband. Her blood group on antenatal testing is AB negative. In the background, the patient conceived through ICSI and the patient has had regular antenatal visits. All lab investigations have been normal. Reza's group is negative and a recent ultrasound shows normal growth. The husband wants to talk to the consultant. The doctor also informs the consultant about her assessment which is that in her opinion the patient is in early labor and so far she and the baby are fine. She does not have her antenatal notes with her and therefore you do not know what has been planned for the delivery. The recommendations are request the consultant to visit the patient and to talk about the relatives about the action plan. They also need a lot of reassurance. Give some idea about locating the antenatal notes and, and also ask for guidance. This concludes the S-bar communication with the consultant and of course you have to ask if there are any other questions or if the, pa the consultant wants to add something to the management of the patient. So after finishing these two cases, let us talk of, about a few other matters regarding SPAR. Firstly, how can we use SBAR properly? To use SBAR properly, the doctor should have all the information about the patient's history, relevant examination, including vital signs, current medications, labs, etc. The success of SBR depends on the professionalism of the doctor communicating the information on the other doctor on the phone and on the professionalism of the doctor who is receiving the information. The doctor who is communicating the information should have updated information on the patient. If the doctor gives the wrong information, then the wrong decision may, will be made and the patient will suffer. Similarly, if the doctor receiving the information makes the wrong decision, then the doc patient will suffer. Therefore, it is very important that the person who is communicating the information and the person who is receiving the information are all highly professional 
and committed to the care of the patient. The other point to discuss is that just as we use S bar for communicating information about the patient verbally, similarly we can also use this method for writing up a report about the patient so that all the relevant details about the patient are included in the report or letter that you are sending regarding the patient. Another very important point to remember is that whenever you communicate information to another consultant or to a, your doctor or to a nurse, make sure you make a note in the medical records about the date, the time, the name of the person to whom you are communicating the information and the actual information itself that you have communicated. This is a legal matter and must be followed for every patient. Lastly, I want to inform you that the process of communication by using SBAR does not take a long time. It may take a few minutes or maximum five minutes to communicate the information and to have a interaction a reaction or a discussion but if you get this task in an exam setting then you will require 10 minutes to complete the answer so though in real life it may be much shorter but you will have to expand and make sure that you cover everything if you come across this topic as a question in the extended talks or in the OSCE examination. With this we complete today's video. If you like it, please like, share, subscribe, comment, press the bell icon to be notified regarding future videos. Thank you and goodbye.